Thank you all so much. That's a wonderful, warm welcome, and I really appreciate that. It's sort of gratification that things I've done in my life truly mattered and are worthwhile. And that makes me feel great. I, I need to correct one thing that Ed said about me being a straight man. The jury's still out on that one. We're not, we're not completely sure. Many people have asked me about how tracks came to be. And in a nutshell, uh, my future wife and her daughters wanted to go to Washington to visit. We came on spring break in 1984. And here I am, a bar owner from Denver, Colorado, coming to the big city, wanting to learn a little bit something about how to run a place, how to get better at what I did. And when I had an opportunity to see what was here, I thought to myself, gee, I, I don't think these places are any better than what we would do in Denver. <laughs> Moreover, they were packed. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I called my partner in Denver, whose son, by the way, Andy, is now here and is running the company. Say hello, Andy. Yeah. And uh, my partner said, oh, Marty, don't tell me you bought a nightclub. I said, no, I just put a down payment. <laughs> and a few months later, tracks open. And as they say, the rest is history. Tracks stood for some very important things. I was just reminded looking at the neon sign, we were perhaps the first gay club in the district that proudly showed ourselves. We, we were not embarrassed to say, here we are. You don't like it, the hell with you. And we took the attitude, we were a large club, a full city block, and we had room for everybody. We were not Asian, Hispanic, or even just gay. We were for everybody. Everyone was welcome. We had a sign on our door that clearly said, if you'll show respect for our gay lifestyle, you're welcome, otherwise stay home. And with that, everybody that was showing respect was welcome. Over the years, we had some very great innovations. We did some things that worked out extremely well. We did some things that laid an egg. But my, my feeling always was, I want to be a baseball player. If you get three hits every 10 times you go to bat, and bat 300, you're in the Hall of Fame. So we could live with seven mistakes for every three we did right, and we did enough things right. I want to particularly thank the people that were involved in putting this together. You've heard Patrick Little's name, and of course Ed Bailey, who's done a phenomenal job. And thank you, Ed. Ed, Ed and I competed over a, about a year or two's period when he opened up Nation, which was a fabulous, fabulous club. And I am so thrilled that when Tracks closed, Ed was our final DJ. Closed Nation to be part of Tracks closing. Thank you, Ed. That was wonderful. Probably the unsung hero of tonight's event is Jesse Wiley. I don't know where Jesse is, but all of the memorabilia seems to have come from his collection. Jesse, thank you so much. I wish I had the foresight to save everything, and it's such a great deal to take a trip down memory lane. I see so many familiar faces, and I apologize that I've forgotten so many names. But it's just great to be here. It's great to see everyone. And I'd like to tell one story that is the spirit of tracks. And it concerns a very early trackie, a gentleman named Johnny Contreras. Some of you may remember Johnny. 
Johnny was a young teenager who was having difficulty getting along with his family in Denver when we first met him at our Denver club. Uh, we had kind of a warehouse area in the Denver club and people who were estranged from their family were welcome to bunk there. We had some cots set up there, we had showers, and if you didn't have anywhere to go, you always had a family at tracks. Johnny was an underage teenager when he first came. We put him to work as a janitor, cleaning up the place, and he had this desire, he wanted to be a DJ, he wanted to be in the music business. And we had some pretty good DJs in Denver who showed him the ropes, and eventually Johnny moved on to become a DJ on our off nights. He'd spin on a Tuesday or a Wednesday and such. Johnny heard that we were going to expand to Washington, D.C., and he said, Marty, take me with you. I want to be part of whatever you're doing over there. I said, I'm thrilled, Johnny. You're a great guy. I'd love to have you part of the team. And Johnny came out with us and said, uh, I'd really like to be spinning when the club opens. So I had an idea. I don't know how many of you remember the old Tracks Express. We had the newsletter that actually printed three editions before we opened. And in the first edition, we mentioned the fact that we were going to get an all-star lineup of great DJs. One of the names I mentioned was Johnny Contreras. In the second edition of the Express, we wrote down that Johnny Contreras was very seriously considering coming to be our DJ. And by the third issue, before we opened, one of the headline stories was Johnny Contreras signs on to be the tracks DJ. We're thrilled. I am sitting in Annie's Paramount Steakhouse dining one day and I listen to a story being told at the next table where one guy says, did you hear Johnny Contreras is going to be playing at tracks? Guy says, he was fabulous at the blue ball in Montreal. He knocked him dead. And the other guy said, I heard him in Miami at the white party. He's, he's the best DJ in the country. That night I said to Johnny, I didn't know you were in Montreal. He says, never been there. I've never been outside of Denver. I says, well, what about Miami? He says, no, never been there either. I says, well, your reputation precedes you. <laughs> I'm proud to say that Johnny was our primary DJ when we opened, and Johnny did a phenomenal job and became the face of tracks. Johnny went on to play in Montreal and went on to play in Miami and did, in fact, knock them dead. He did a phenomenal job. Johnny, to me, is the spirit of tracks. Here is somebody who wanted to do well, worked hard, made himself into something special, and sadly, Johnny is no longer with us, but his spirit remains. And I think of Johnny fondly, just as I think of people like Jay Schmidt fondly, who also, sadly, is not able to join us here tonight. I'd, I'd like a moment of silence for both Johnny, for Jay Schmidt, and for all the other people that were near and dear to us who are no longer here. Thank you all. I appreciate that. Now, I, in, clo in closing, I'd like to say one other thing, that there is still a Trax. The spirit in D.C. may not be here any longer, but Trax does exist in Denver, Colorado. And, and I'm inviting every one of you to come to Denver. We're going to be having a Trax reunion kind of weekend over there. July 4th, we've got events planned all week. Please go on our website, tracksdenver.com, and you can learn all about it. We'd love to have everybody show up if at all possible.
And uh, if you're interested in the history of how Tracks came to be, there is a story of Tracks Nightclub on YouTube, which is kind of an interesting, fun thing. I know because I was the one that was interviewed, and I tell the whole story. So please give it some thought. Thank you all so much. Thank you for coming. Marty Chernoff.